So we are on Wednesday morning and we are heading off to our first job. Now this one is a Vauxhall Vivaro suspect charging issue. Don't know if it's already had a, a new alternator on it, probably has. Um, so we're going to head over there and get that one diagnosed for him and I'm going to take you along for the journey. Now we've also got a reverse camera on a 21 plate BMW 1 series, we'll show a little fast clip of that as well. So we have just finished our next job which is this BMW 1 series, this is a 2022. Now we've just fitted a reversing camera kit to this and I'm just going to show you how that works and I may as well show that this is something that we do on the channel so um, if we go into the reverse you can see the camera pops up and we have got the parking guides so there's various models that we cover on this uh, or, or the cover so if you've got a vehicle that's not got a reverse camera and you're wanting a similar kit to this obviously we do the transits we've made a video about that um, then feel free to get in touch Milligan Diagnostic Services at gmail.com or I'll leave another email in the description and we might have a old school FRM repair they've not, we've not done one of them in God knows how long um, but yeah we're going to take you along for the journey anyway first job charging fault so I'll see you there Right, so we're here, we've got this Vauxhall Vivaro outside and the customer complaint with this one, like I said, is a charging fault on the dash. I'll just show you a couple of clips on what's actually happening with the vehicle and then we'll get into scanning it. So as you can see, it has a charging fault on the dash there. Now the vehicle is still charging, but it's reverted back to a standard alternator, so it's charging at 14.4 volts but these alternators are controlled through a LIN bus network so that LIN bus wire should be controlling the alternator so it won't always charge at 14.4 volts it will charge, the charge will vary depending on that LIN bus signal and what that LIN bus signal wants the alternator to charge at so I'm going to get the, the Hela tool plugged into it we're going to read fault codes and then we're going to see what action we need to take from there now we're going to get the lanyard connected on this because the OBD is deep in the dash so I don't want to leave this uh, in the vehicle because I need to use it on the next vehicle so let's go and get this plugged in do a quick scan and we'll see what fault codes are in the system and then like I said depending on what's there if there's anything there happy days if there's nothing then we need to just go by tests that we're uh, known to do with these type of faults we might get a picoscope on it and scan uh, scan the, the LIN bus. We might get a picoscope on it and we'll scope the LIN bus, see what's happening at the alternator. Um, and then we'll compare that to an own good LIN bus on the likes of maybe the battery current sensor because we know that's controlled by a LIN bus as well. That will give us an idea of good and bad. So let's get this plugged in and we'll take things from there. The OBD is just up there. There we go yellow and then blue so we've just done the vehicle search using the Mega Max S20 so I'm going to click OK you can see there it gives us a description again of where the OBD is so we're just going to go into trouble codes and I'm going to click on powertrain I'm going to click OK continue See, I've got air mass meter, they have got that disconnected. The bumper is off. Trouble codes P01. Yeah, we're not interested in any of those. So we're going to go off of that. Maybe there isn't any fault codes on this one. I think we'll just do a start request on each module. So we'll see how long this takes to do that. We'll see if there's anything related to the alternator not charging. So let's just let that run through. 
for health scan, nice and quick. So we have got four fault codes in OBD, we've got two in the engine. So I got interrupted there again. Uh, that's why I'm, I've shut the door in the, in the van there. Um, right, so we're picking up for where they left off, so let me spin these around. We were on the, the health scan there and in the additional body control module, we've got Terminator, eh, Terminator, Terminal L Alternator, eh, B120F, Possible Effects, Malfunction of Vehicle Electrics, Battery Failure, Disturbed Trouble Code Readout. So you see there, it gives us a few possible causes. Signal line has a short circuit or open circuit, defective alternator regulator, defective ECU. So out of the, the ones that are probably going to Unlikely is defective ECU. Um, the only ones that I can see that are going to be are probably these two defective alternator or um, an open circuit in the LIN bus. So, what I'm going to do for the purposes of the video is I'm going to get the picoscope connected up. We're going to show you a known good uh, LIN bus signal, what it should look like, and then we're going to show you what the LIN bus signal looks like on this alternator. So, I've got the Opel Vauxhall diesel. Barrel B. Now I want to click on, there won't be much difference from this one, so sometimes you just need to go through the different variations of vehicle. So we're going to move these back a little bit, some you guys in. If we go into the engine, we'll maybe see if we've got a starting and charging. There we go, we do. So let's find the generator. The alternator. And if we come down here, you can see our alternator right there. Pin one going into a two wire plug, uh, a two pin plug, uh, is LIN bus controlled. Now, if we zoom in a little bit further on that for all the viewers to see, so we've got a LIN bus here. So that LIN bus. It's coming down here, going to the alternator, and that comes from the body control module too. So that comes from basically the engine bay fuse box, more or less. And you can see there, gives us a, the identification that it is a LIN bus. So the only way to check that properly is by scoping it out with the Pico scope or any scope that you've got that's capable of doing it. So that is what we're going to do. We're going to get the Pico scope set up outside. We're going to run the leads into the van, start the car up and we'll show you the difference between good and bad and then we'll try and locate whether or not we have got an open circuit if we've got a good LIN bus going down to the alternator then that tells us that the alternator is faulty if we haven't got a good LIN bus going down to the alternator then we know that we've got an open circuit from that body control module on the LIN bus wire going to the alternator itself so let me get the picoscope set up on the vehicle and I'll come back to you once I've done all that Right, so my setup here is I'm back probed into the battery current sensor just as a known good waveform and I'm currently probed into the LIN bus wire of the alternator Now we've got two channels set up Channel A is the one going to the LIN bus plug on the alternator and Channel B is the one that's going to the battery current sensor as a known good waveform So I'll show you what's happening on this So we've got the two channels there Now if you look at channel A, which is the one on the LIN bus going to the alternator, you can see there's quite a lot of dropouts happening here. Whereas channel B is nice and smooth. There doesn't seem to be any dropouts on channel B, so what I'm going to do is zoom in a little bit. Zoom in. Oops, sorry. And we'll just open that up a little bit more. Now you can see here what's actually happening with the LIN bus is it's got loads of dropouts on it so this is a, the alternator plug and you can see just at those moments there you're getting spikes and it's dropping out whereas it should be nice and uniform like that at the bottom there that's why i done the comparison between the battery current sensor and the one on the alternator plug just to give you an idea of 
what's good and what's not. And there's even a better capture there, so you can see all these dropouts here on the, the Lynn bus, on the top waveform there. Let's look at the difference compared to both of them. So that this this one here is the, the one at the actual alternator plug. So we know that we've got a Lynn bus issue going to the alternator. It's not the actual alternator that's faulty. So there we go, Lynn bus fault on a Vauxhall Vivaro or as other people know it, Renault Traffic. Well, the exact same vans more or less. Um, so I already know where this wire uh, is broken. The reason, or I say broken, there's three types of electrical faults, open, short and resistive. Uh, this one, because we've got dropouts here, you can see on the screen there's quite a lot of dropouts. This one is a resistive fault because if it was completely open circuit, it would just, you know, it wouldn't read anything. So we have got resistance in the, the wire coming from the body control module or the additional one in the engine bay. And that is why our LIN bus wire um, is unable to accurately communicate with the alternator and adjust the actual charge. So I'm quite happy to show you guys where the brake is or the resistance is on the wiring loom. If I've had it maybe three or four times on these, this area that, that it's in today, I've never had it in this area. It's really close to the plug. Um, the other area that I did have it was further up the loom, closer to the, the passenger side, believe it or not. Um, so this one will be an easy repair, but I'll come and show you where the actual brake is in the loom. Now if we come down here, hopefully you'll be able to see that. Maybe not. I'll come a wee bit closer. Can you see that corrosion there? So there is corrosion right more or less at the plug. So we'll need to get that repaired and then we'll compare the good waveform to the, the old one. Eh, sorry, the, we'll compare the waveforms. Obviously once we've repaired that we'll have a good LIN bus going into that plug and then it'll be able to talk to the alternator. Look at that, a lovely bit of corrosion there. Beautiful. So we'll get that repaired, get it all taped up, back in the vehicle. The pins look a little bit corroded, but we can clean that up. Then this vehicle should be charging okay. Alright, so now that the LIN bus wire is now repaired, let's have a look. Look at that, nice and crisp. No resistance anymore in the, the wiring harness. So that is perfect. So we can confirm that our issue is indeed sorted. You can see, look at the look at the difference. Well, there's no difference anymore. It's nice and uniformed. So I'm happy to say that we have fixed that LIN bus fault. So now that that LIN bus wire is repaired and we know that the waveform is good, what we're going to do is start the van up, and I'll show you that the charging fault and all the other warnings are gone, apart from the engine management light because the mass airflow sensor is disconnected. This van's got another couple of things going on with it. Uh, we're only here for the charging fault. Now, if we start the van up, you can see we haven't got any charging issues now and the vehicle is charging the way it should. We've just got that check injection. That's, like I said, a separate issue. But we're good to go, so I'm going to wrap this one up guys. Thanks very much for watching. Remember, click that like, share and subscribe button. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.